And just like in classical physics, we can build up arbitrary waveforms out of the eigenfunctions. So in fact, if I had an infinite potential well, and I wanted to have a very complicated wave function, this is possible to write using a superposition of a number of the eigenfunctions. This is analogous to if I have uh, an arbitrary waveform in music, I can accomplish that waveform by making a superposition of frequencies, or a Fourier spectrum. In quantum mechanics, we write this wave function as follows, that it's a sum over n, n being all the allowed eigenvalues, or eigen, uh, it's principal quantum numbers, eigenvalues n. We put a constant cn as a multiplier in front of each of these eigenfunctions, psi n of x, where the psi n are the signs of the kn of x times x. These constants cn are the constants that describe the admixture of these allowed eigenfunctions. We still want a wave function that's normalized. which means that we want the wave function to have an integral of its norm squared equal to 1. And that requires uh, some conditions on these constants cm. In other words, if I have this is true, the norm squared of psi integral is 1. That's the same as integrating psi times its complex conjugate. So here I've written psi, and here I've written its complex conjugate. And so now I need this complicated expression to equal 1. Let me rearrange that expression just a little bit. I'm going to pull the summations out. And I guess I could have pulled these things out as well, because these are just constants. So let me, in fact, do that. Now, there's something rather special about these functions, the eigenfunctions of this, the, that solve the Schrodinger equation. These are, the, again, the functions that have proper energies. And I'm going to ask you to solve this on a prompt homework by explicit example. But in general, the eigenfunctions, or the solutions to the Schrodinger equation, satisfy the following condition. That this integral over dx of psi n psi m star equals delta n m. That's, in other words, equal to 1 if n equals m, and equals 0 if n is not equal to m. That's a little bit like saying these functions act like the unit vectors in a multidimensional space. Think back to uh, three-dimensional vector spaces where I have i hat, j hat, and k hat. Or I can call these things uh, the x sub i's, the unit vectors, x1, x2, x3. I'm just thinking about ordinary three-dimensional space. 
these things have the property that xi hat dotted into xj hat equals delta ij. In other words, this i hat vector dotted into j, the j hat vector is 0, but i hat dotted into itself is 1. So I, this is a, a very general property of solutions of the Schrodinger equation, the eigenfunctions act like these orthogonal uh, basis vectors, but I'm going to ask you to show it on the homework by explicit integration for the case of the particles in the box, that in fact this little theorem is true, that psi n psi m star integrated over x is a delta function, just like these dot products here. So we can think of integration in this case kind of like a dot product action, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a future quantum mechanics class. Well, the implication now is that this integral that we were trying to solve is a lot easier than we thought. Uh, we don't actually have to do all these integrals and sum over many of them because only some of them are going to be non-zero. Which ones are going to be non-zero? Well, it's the ones with n equals m. So in fact, what we have is that expression, because that integral just reduces to that little delta function, delta nm. And when I set n equals m, that kills that way all these sums except for the ones where n equals m, and I'm left with this particular sum here. This is now the, norm, the new normalization function for our wave function psi of x, which is the superposition of all these numbers, cn times sin of x. Now I have to point out that this thing is not a stationary state. Whereas this thing is a state, a set of state, these things are stationary states. These things correspond to states of definite energy. So in fact, what I probably should write is little e to the minus i omega nt's here. And because these omega n's are the energy eigenvalues divided by the h-bar, this superposition state, psi, capital psi, notice I'm writing capital psi now. I'm going to scratch away this thing because it's not quite right now. Um, this superposition state, capital psi, does not correspond to a state of definite energy anymore, and therefore it no longer uh, satisfies the, the definition of what an eigenstate is. It's not a stationary state. Just like in ordinary music, an arbitrary wave function, uh, waveform, which looks like this, is not a state of definite frequency. It's the superposition of a multiple bunch of frequencies or tones that uh, that comprise this overall uh, waveform. So that's very different from what we're used to. If we're we're remembering that there are certain properties of stationary states. Uh, that we've developed over t this last few uh, lectures, and they won't be true of this superposition state, capital Psi.